Hello, are you new to MapInfo? Perhaps you're having a go with the trial version of MapInfo or somebody's just installed and you're struggling to get started because essentially it's a blank screen. My name's John Ivers, I'm a director here at CDR Group. We are a partner in the UK to Precisely Software, the owners of MapInfo. And when you open up MapInfo, well, we get this welcome screen and uh, in the middle, there's content here that's populated from the web. So this changes on a sometimes daily or weekly basis. So we have it in the news. We've got articles on how to get started. Those are useful. There's a video spotlight which changes and we also have help up here and manuals. Nobody wants to read through a manual though. We've also got the knowledge community, really useful, well used, and uh, click on here where you can see articles and questions. Uh, if you want to ask a question, you just need to register. Over on the left hand side, we'll see we can open up blank workspaces or last save session. Well, what's a workspace? I don't know. Um, I'm not used to it. Well, a workspace is like a project and it contains a number of tables. Tables? Yeah, very much database driven. And whether that's uh, an aerial image, it's a 3D terrain model, or it's a database, or just an Excel spreadsheet. Or we can also run programs within here. But essentially, when we open up Map Info, we get a blank screen. And we're on the home page. Um, okay, when you open up Word, you get a blank page to start writing your letter. So what do you want to put here? What do you want to represent on a map? Under the open, we've got all the options of opening up workspaces and tables, importing data, using data from different formats or database tables. But here's something useful, base maps. These first three are Bing and the next three are precisely bronze, steel and iron, which are different styles of OpenStreetMap. Free, they come with map info and they're pulled off the internet so this is all kept up to date by somebody else you can also connect to other web services and here are some recent files so where do we start do we start with a map or some data um, in our recent files let's have a look at in the UK where I'm speaking from a lot of people go by the postcode full postcode unit and here's a database that's uh, 1.7 million records. If I just hover over that, we can see it's CA72BA, the postcode unit in the Carlisle area. That's the postal area, not the local authority area. And as you zoom out, you'll see there's lots and lots of points. Indeed, if you move over to Tyneside, you'll see it densely populated. But what we could really do with here is a map, isn't it? So let's go back to the home ribbon and open up something like Bing Hybrid, which will give us aerial imagery and road names. As you zoom in, we'll get those. Okay, um, postcode unit, on average 15 properties per postcode, and that is an average. It's useful to have the maps. So okay, let's try that precisely bronze to give us what might be seen as more of a traditional map where we can start seeing features as we zoom in. But one dot for 15 or more properties isn't too useful. So another one I'm going to open up here on our recent list is the full address and this product is not free but this is address based core and some 30 million addresses. I can interrogate these rather than just the first element here and so if I click here we can see we're at 36 Dacre Road Sunderland and we've either got a single line address or the component parts of the, that address. There's some codes in here to tell us if that's residential or business. 
but there's an awful lot of data here at times you can't see much map so we can switch these off and bring them back in at any point if you want to go back to Bing one thing to note that this is covering the whole world so it is a world projection whereas the Ordnance Survey data is in GB Ordnance Survey GB projection what else might we want here um, how about local authority boundaries another freebie from Ordnance Survey and so district borough and unitaries well, I'm so busy with all these points yes I can see there's some lines come in uh, how about labeling these with the actual name can't see those very well but um, we can put a highlight behind them to help them stand out maybe make it bold and so we start building up layers and layers of information and fine if you've got business data we can what we term geocode our data against the postcode or even the full address using address based core or one of the other address properties uh, products from Ordnance Survey okay we build up and we build up and so we've got a map that was web mapping now this data here in another instance I'm using uh, vector data which as I zoom in we'll see in a similar way we've got the component but these are it's what we term vector data and every road and every railway and every point we can click on is made up of points lines and polygons so when we've got that structure of data everything has data behind it so as we hover over we can see what it is is underlying the first thing it could be as you can see over here now we've got lots of layers of data all sitting on top of each other we can rearrange these we can switch them on and off and indeed what we do have here is the ability to open up some other data and this one is some crime data sample and when you've got that sort of data where you're looking at oh there's lots here how many well a useful tool within here is hotspot mapping so I can quickly say oh yeah these are our crime hotspots they could be air quality sample points they could be any sort of point that we can produce hotspots from also put on some other mapping here and this is raster mapping which is similar to the web mapping that we've seen but this is locally stored on my PC here and this is the 1 to 50,000 scale mapping from Ordnance Survey which is probably better suited to the rural areas and this is the sort of map you go walking the hills with and that's the whole of GB but as you see as you zoom out not so easy to see as you zoom in then you can see it made up of individual pixels raster image made of pixels okay there's another one here's um, more of a local authority scenario where we have modern survey master map and this is where we get down to really detailed data the width of the pavement and every building and this is updated daily by Ordnance Survey sometimes thousands of times a day depending on the day of the week of course so I'm looking here again local data but this is Chesterfield area and we've got an area of some housing against master map and various layers of data 
over here, see acquisitions, uh, grounds maintenance contracts. This is the same data but against a raster background. And now we have points indicating which houses are in the rent arrears, the red ones. And that is taking data and producing something called a thematic map, a map with a theme, which is also what we have in the top right hand corner. This is looking at index of multiple deprivation from ONS or Office for National Statistics. And this takes hordes of data and the index of multiple deprivation takes into account things like income, employment, education, health, crime, barriers to housing, living environment. So it pulls all of those together in a single score and then we can colour up that map according to that score and we're going to see the deprived areas versus the well-off areas. Lots of elements but then at some point maybe you want to do a printout or at least save a PDF and that's where we produce a layout. And a layout is where we put this map together and maybe put a logo on there, a title, a scale bar and uh, we might want to put this into a report or print it off say a planning purpose. lots of possibilities but essentially we're looking at data sitting on top of maps sitting on top of more data looking at the relationships between them and also querying that data so we've got lots of ribbons starting with the home and then looking at things to do with the database table side of life the map obviously then covers everything to do with the map windows Spatial enables us to create data and edit data and do some nice clever visualizations. Layout is where we produce that layout and raster is where we start working with raster data, maybe 3D data, but that's moving on to the next ribbon. This is more of an advanced feature. Hopefully you can get started with that and there's some description of what you can do and how you build up your data into either lots of windows or a single window. Have a look at a lot of the videos when you start looking at individual features and tasks that you might want to do. Knowledge Community is the place to go. Once you're into Map Info, just go back to the Pro tab and there you'll see resources and we can dip back to the getting started and the knowledge communities and the help if you need it. Hope you found that useful.